Good evening, everybody, and welcome back to stream number six of my Kingdom Hearts Rechain of Memories playthrough. Last time around, I believe we had cleared floor eight, and not entirely sure, I can't quite remember if we defeated Riku for the second time or not. But I'm sure we will find out um, momentarily when we jump back into the game. Going on, Perfirius, welcome along, hope you're well. And without further ado, let us jump in and continue our journey. Alrighty, so it looks like we did defeat Riku last time around. I know we started the stream with the Riku fight and we actually ended it with exactly the same fight. Um, but yeah, let's um, jump all in. I was trying to think of Kairi. Everyone seems to have forgotten about Kairi now that uh, Namine has been um, mentioned, which is interesting. So, let us go to Neverland next. That's where we're going to go. The Peter Pan and Tinkerbell. Right, they've, re they've, they've announced... They've announced when it's going to be released. Have I missed the big news? Second of November. Uh, I will. I will take a look. To be fair, it's actually pretty cheap as well. That's crazy. Like twenty twenty two fifty. Actually, if I buy. Weirdly enough, if I buy it via the bundle, which I already have Palos 1, I can actually get it cheaper. It's only um, £20 and 24 so I can get it a couple of couple of pounds cheaper, which is bizarre. Um, I may have to uh, remember to pre-order that. Yeah, I'll sort that out tomorrow, I think. Let me make a note. Pre-order Dallas 2. With big stars and asterisks and exclamation marks. <laughs> yeah, from what I've seen, like, the actual, like, the look of the game. It's, um... That's a, that's a, that's a steal. It's a bargain. Definitely. Where are we now? Or it's kind of unsteady. I can hear the ocean too. I know, we must be inside a ship. Well, we'd better find a way out. But which way do we go? Ah! Who are you? Maybe she's trying to help us. Looks like you're right. Let's follow Tinkerbell. Sora learns glide. Fly through the air with circle. Alrighty. Uh, I've still got my magic deck on. That's not great. 
That's not great at all. Your um, as your week been, Aphirus? How's everything going with your studies? E W. We were just talking about Talos. Actually, I didn't realise that. Um, it was already available for pre-order, but as I just said to uh, Aperius, like, it's actually pretty darn cheap for a game, like, that looks as good as Talos does. Insane. How you doing, buddy? Everything good in uh, the land of DW? I gotta stop sliding dashing because like against flying and me sliding dash does absolutely nothing. Such a waste of time. Senior. Hello. Power. How's it going? I'm uh, I'm good, thanks, buddy. How are you? Uh, uh, doing as well as I could be. So, uh, well, uh, you, sound like, you sound like yeah. you're still alive, so that's always a bonus, I guess. <laughs> yeah. Uh, Speaking of Talos, yeah, I went ahead and uh, it, it's pretty stupid how they charge your stuff. Uh, I think the I think it was like $39.99 uh, or $29.99. I can't remember. But uh, if, if you bought it, it says, yeah, you own uh, the first one, so yeah, or you can purchase it for twenty-six dollars and something. I just said exactly the same thing to Perfurious when Perfurious mentioned it. I looked on the store quickly, and I said exactly the same thing. It's like because I own the first game, I can I can get it cheaper by buying a bundle. Yeah, which I it suppose like it's, a, it's, it's, But to be fair, I think that's that's probably good because it's like a way that they're probably um, giving a bit of discount for the fans who want to play it. So. It just doesn't make a damn bit of sense, but you know, I'm not going to well, complain. Well, what didn't make sense to me is like buying, uh, pre pre purchasing the second one. It says you already earned the first one. Here, here's a discount, and it was more than if I went to the bundle. Which, yeah, yeah that, that's what I'm saying though. It's like by buying yeah. the bundle because you've already got the first one. It's like they're giving you a, a sort of like initiative yeah. to buy the second one as a. Uh, yeah, but I mean, why does it say, hey, you already got the first one. Here's a 10% discount on the second one. But if you scroll down to the bundle, yeah, you, that one's already in your library. Here, 
You get a 19% discount or whatever the hell it is. It's like, what? Uh, mate, the, the way, like, this whole, these stores work is just baffling. The worst example of it is, like, the PlayStation Store. Like, one of the, um, one of the streamers that I watch a lot of, he was going through the PlayStation Store earlier today. And they've got various games on bundle, bundle editions and things, but he actually went through and calculated that it's just, it's cheaper to buy the games individually than it is part of the bundle so these yeah, stores always have like too. weird and wonderful um ways of marketing products hey crazy how you doing i'm uh, glad you enjoyed the podcast yeah crazy uh how's it going you watched it three times well glad you enjoyed it uh, Knock put a lot of hard work into that, so that's good. Yeah, to give you an idea of how much work I actually put into it, I, I took out 36 minutes in edit in post like in post edit of Death Wish just going. Uh, 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 uh. <laughs> yeah, you know, I started to recognize. Uh, I was watching just like I did there. It's become a bad habit over, over the years, and <clears throat> but I was watching some other podcasts, like from uh, but the well-known people, who, uh, celebrities, that sort of thing, and and they did uh, the same thing. Yeah. Uh. 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 It, it was pretty, pretty consistent. The, the thing is, I, I when I was going through and doing the editing, and I was just looking for various bits of software to do a couple of bits and pieces. There's actually some podcast um, software you can get, which will automatically take out all of your like ers and ums and hisses. And oh things. wow! So. Yeah, it's, that, it's crazy. that's pretty cool. Uh, there we go. That that was deleted. And <laughs> yeah, I'm not really surprised, uh, seeing as how AI is really yeah. becoming mainstream. I mean, uh, Windows or Microsoft has uh, their uh, what do they call it? Uh, just it just left my brain but you, you can if you have the edge browser it uh, it's built in you just click on the it's, it's built into the uh, chat and but it's it's mainly released on uh, for you know for windows 11 and it's not the, um, are you talking about like the video editing software? No, the, the AI. Oh, uh, Cortana. Whatever. I don't no, know no, no, no. That or... No, not Cortana. That's, that's old school now. Um... They've, um, they've just started, um, the latest Windows 11 update. They've, they're bundling in something called Copilot now, which is... Yeah, that's a Copilot. Yeah. yeah. So... Yeah, it's it's on it's on. You can, I have Windows 10. I can't run Windows 11, not just because. Well, the last time I ran the health check thing or whatever they call it, it says that you know I don't I don't have the my motherboard doesn't have the secure you know the, the chip and whatever the software that's the, yeah. the security crap. Okay, there's ways around that, but I ran it again today, and this time it actually said my CPU wasn't uh, acceptable. Okay. You, 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 even though it starts, like, yeah, I look at the number of, uh, I, I look at the CPUs that are supported by Intel, 
And that starts from like I5 one up. I have an I7. What generation, what generation processor have you got though? Cause that, um, I, I'm pretty sure it's like generation seven onwards with Intel is supported. So yeah, I mine's, I don't know. Uh, mine's a seventh generation, I think. Um, uh, I, I, I honestly Intel don't know. So. Yeah, I just have, I, I know I have a 37, uh, i7 3770 uh, K, and yeah. Anyway, that's not in there. And if you look at the list, it goes from uh, the, the twos or three, you know, it, or ones. It, it completely skips uh, the 30, the 30 series. Yeah. And goes on up, and I'm like, well, okay, it has way lower stuff. It goes down to i fives and all that. So, oh well. I mean, no big deal for me. I mean, uh, Windows 10 works fine. So, but yeah. So, uh, come on. What's going on, Napas? Welcome on stream. Hope you well. I was um, Starfield earlier. I didn't turn. I uh, left stuff you were sort of packing up payday. Um, God, Napaz has tricks. Uh, Lots of them. Yeah, Starfield, my nephew, uh, has been playing that since it came out. And he's he was streaming it on my Discord uh, the other day, so, or last week rather but yeah it, he, he's not doing uh, twitch or anything so but he's he's going through the main campaign uh, he's in a hundred and I don't know a hundred and some odd hours he's going through the main campaign a couple times level still leveling up and now you're starting to, uh, to do uh, the side quest and things like that. So, yeah, it pretty much takes it takes a long time to get to uh, apparently, you know, to where you're really leveling up. And there's, from what I read, there's no level limit. Side quests keep flashing their booty at you, neighbors. Oh, um, Napaz, Napaz, um, he was saying in the stream yesterday that he bought, like, a, an upgraded ship, but it's taken him about four streams just to get, like, the required level to be able to use the ship. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Uh, not surprising. But yeah, it seems like, it, it seems interesting, uh, I made a off-site backup, but it's just so huge, and I'm really, I really need to go through my hard drives and just delete and format and all that kind of stuff and free up space because yeah. I'm 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 running out of space uh, due to the size of games nowadays. And, yeah, I mean, they're, they're quiet. Um, they're getting quite large, some of these games. But I mean, um, Napaz had to um, go out and buy a brand new SSD because the game was running like crazy. And it's the first time I've actually seen a game that says, like, as part of the requirements that you need to have an SSD. I think because of the how big like the areas are and how quickly it needs to kind of like load bits and pieces, I guess. Yeah. Uh, and I, but mine's, you know, my PC is the oldest PC I've ever had without upgrading, which I would have done quite some time ago. But of course, when I could, that was during the, uh, which we call it, the, the miners. By, buying up all the cards and prices yeah. will just instead of you know three 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 four hundred dollars for 
a, a decent RTX card. It was like twelve hundred dollars for it, you know. So I was like, uh -uh. I'm not, I'm not one of those. Uh -uh. Uh, I have to say, you have to, you know, gotta mine those crypto coins somehow, aren't you? Yeah, exactly. <laughs> uh, I, I just uh, it finally subsided, and then the crypto guys, crypto miners, got screwed. They were trying to sell their cards for. You know, still like ridiculous prices, and yeah, only idiots would buy them. Nobody was buying them because I, I got a 3060 RTX for basically retail, and sadly, uh, it's really not uh, great because my motherboard and CPU don't don't help it you know you kind of have to have newer stuff for the yeah. G gpu to really get its full potential so yeah I, it's, it's gonna be a little while <laughs> but yeah kind of looking forward to talos 2 now maybe yeah. not as, maybe not as much as uh porphyrius but uh, I'm, yeah, uh, looking forward to it. I was, you know, especially when I saw the price, I was like, okay. Yeah, the price really uh, shocked me, to be fair. I mean, like I said, I hadn't, I hadn't seen anything about it, and then when Furious mentioned it at the, um, the top of the stream, I took a quick look. Um, uh, it was mentioned on Discord and yesterday, so I, I went on and was like, ah, okay, pre-order, blah, blah, blah. That's what he said on Discord. So I went in and was like, oh, damn. Yeah, less it was $24 and change. Yeah. And I'm like... I, mean, I think when I looked, the, the the game, if you just buy the game, was like twenty two fifty, and then it was 20, 20 25 if you buy the bundle when you've already got um, Palace 1. So, I mean, for okay, 20, so 20, I, I for 20 that, quid, it's a steal. So, yeah, I guess that translates to about $24 American. If, if I could help you win the lottery, I certainly would. As long as uh, you're willing to cut me in. Yeah, uh, wait a minute. I, I need a new rig first. <laughs> I mean, I have plenty of monitors. I have a lot of things, but yeah, I need a new motherboard. CPU. Uh, everything goes along with it. <laughs> yeah, I wouldn't even. Uh, this time, I wouldn't even build it myself. I would, I would buy like a. I would, I would spend over, over spend on one that's already made. You know, spend like five grand. Mm. You know, like get like a RTX. Uh, 80, 90. <laughs> Is that ten percent per million that you win, Napaz? Yeah, we we good with that. Yeah. That's one costs you forty euros when you bought it. And sequel's gonna cost thirty. I know. I mean, considering like the the way from from what we've been like shown of the new the new game, it's um, to, to only charge that much is crazy, absolutely crazy. The only my only concern about like the the low price is, are they gonna try and um, load it with um, DLC DLCs and microtransactions to? Um, kind of get the cost that way. Although I would like to think that Talos isn't really a game that you're going to see microtransactions for, but you know, never say never, I guess. I, I think they would just be more DLC driven, like the like the original game. Yeah, I don't think they would do microtransactions. No, freaking hope not. No, that would definitely. Turn a lot of people off, and everything I read, uh, 
doesn't look to point that direction. So I, I would just only assume they would add some DLC as time passes on. Yeah. Just, uh, you know, as people are playing the game and they get through it, then they, I'm sure they already have DLC at the ready. Oh, of course, yeah. But, you know, they're just going to wait and release it, you know, bit by bit to, and, and I, I don't blame them. I mean, considering, you know, the price of the base game, you know, if, if, if that gives you uh, 30, 40 hours of gameplay, you know, or, you know anything like in that range. I don't see that as a bad deal. No. I, I, I think it'll be actually more gameplay than that. So I, I, I think, at least I hope so, but I, I think it'll be uh, well worth. You know, yeah, we'll, yeah, for sure. What they're, what they're, what they're releasing it for, and then, you know, it's not like they're asking 70 bucks triple-a games like you know starfield and stuff like that 70 bucks boom you know Freeze. yeah i learned from the mushrooms uh no paz i actually i actually got the platinum yesterday for kingdom hearts one uh it's all finished and done now so yeah moving on yeah i don't think i ever bought any uh DLC into oh, it. Yeah. Um, I think somebody somebody like gifted me like the game and all the DLCs. Um, I'm pretty sure. I mean, I really I really enjoyed Gahina. The my my only issue with it was it I just felt like there was so much um, text and so much um, like story. I think like my streams of that, I kind of spend probably um, an hour solving puzzles and then two hours actually reading the terminals and going through all the uh, text and whatnot. It was, I think it was a bit text and story heavy, but. Yeah, that's too much um, for me. I, I like story and I, I like that kind of stuff, but I don't want to be reading books when I'm playing a game. That's just yeah. me. I know, I know a lot of people were story oriented and that sort of thing. No, I, I'm buying it for the for the puzzles. So. Yeah. And, and and throw in a little story with it. Yeah, that's nice. And if you had some extra story that you don't have to play, but you can go do it if you want. And fine, but yeah. Where is uh, the door? Uh, I started playing that that game you talked about. Uh, which one? The Premier Library. The, the, uh, I can't Patrick's remember. Power Box? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, I, I kind of been rolling right on through it up until where I am. So. Yeah, I played the, um, I remember playing the demo, and then I think it was soon after I finished tu Tunic last year. LB gifted me that, and I think it was another one called, I want to say it's called Taj or something, something like that. Um, both kind of puzzle games, but yeah, I've just never, I've not really had a chance to do a lot, to be fair. Yeah, I, honestly, it reminds me, like I've gotten to the point to where, you know, you play the demo, so no spoilers. Uh, and I won't talk about other stuff other than, well, if you go to the store page, it, it shows you 
pretty much anything you're gonna play yeah. uh just in bits you know so it, it started out just pushing blocks like which is not a new thing uh, that, that's been done for decades but the 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 difference in this game is that it has the the blocks within the blocks yeah like you, you can go inside of, of the blocks and you can even go block inside a block inside a block and so on and it kind of and it kind of reminds me of uh, uh, uh what's crap court monkey a request uh, yeah it, it, it has that same vibe but i think his was Personally, I think his was more original. Yeah. Uh, ever, uh, uh, this, this is like the basic concept of the game has been done. And they just added in the blocks that you can manipulate. Yeah. Uh, differently, so. But yeah, it's still cool. Uh, I like the, the additional twist that that adds, so. But yeah, I think Poor Punky's game was by far uh, more original. So, who knows? They might have taken the lead from this game. I really fancy going back to um, the first at some point and trying out the DLC that those guys made. But no, I don't I, know if they made a DLC. There's. It wasn't Poor Punky. There was. Um, I'm sure there were like a team of Chinese developers and they asked if they could make um, a DLC but it's I tried it and it is you, know, you think some of the levels in Port Ponky's original was hard these are just like off the off the chart ridiculous <laughs> yeah I, I, honestly I don't want to go any hard than what he presented because there are some tough ones yeah and going beyond that i mean it got to the point to where i was almost like okay am i gonna continue playing this because my brain just hurts every single time i'm playing it now uh, the satisfaction started it, it was satisfying to to finish this but you know yeah I was, I was just like yeah so uh, well chinese at least they asked and then didn't just make a knockoff uh so <laughs> could you give us some guidance on how to approach difficult puzzles you want to get some courage not to view any solution videos for talos yeah, I saw of that. Sneaky hits, hints that were insane. I've decided not to watch any solution videos. How do I approach difficult puzzles? Um, well, I guess it kind of goes. I guess the only thing I can really relate to, um, Perfir, is, is like what we covered in uh, me and Deathwish covered in the podcast. Like, it's just for me, it's it's just the way I am built. And as much as I, I am like, dedicated and I will, you know, sit there until I bang my head against the wall constantly trying to figure something out. I mean, suppose try and give some advice. It's always about taking a back step and analyzing what you've got, what you've already done, and just trying to find maybe something subtle that you like tweak or change about the, your approach and the solution that you've already tried to apply because just finding sometimes finding something like really subtle in a puzzle will completely blow it open and um open the path to solving it um yeah i totally agree i don't know if you got anything to add there Deathwish. i mean we kind of get back to the podcast but yeah yeah, you, you, you kind of stick with it past where I would. And I'll, I'll kind of take a break from it 
Okay, there's something else. Watch some videos. And in the back of my mind, um, I, I tend to still work on puzzles, especially Portal. Uh, I would always, if I was stuck, I would just go do something else, watch videos, do, do, just take my mind off of that. But in the back of my mind, and, and I, well, and I'll say a lot of times, just going to the bathroom and yeah. work, working it out in my head, just, you know, I know the layout of the puzzle and everything in it, just working it out in my head without looking at it. All of a sudden, bam, you know, within a, a few minutes, I'm back and I'm like, okay, let me try this. Uh, but yeah, I think the, for me, the best way is always to leave it alone or whatever, go do something else, go have dinner, go watch a movie, you know, YouTube, whatever it may be, you know, whatever you want to do. I'll play another game, come back to it, and your subconscious, uh, it, you know, tends to work on it. And uh, it'll kind of give you fresh eyes when you come back. Yeah, it's um, one thing I was, I was going to add, not, not just from a, a gaming point of view, but I, that approach for me even works when I'm sort of um, work. If I'm sat here and stuck on something, what even like taking like just walking away and coming back to it another day sometimes helps. And the amount of times like at work, I've been like trying to figure something out, can't get it to work, but I, I rock up the next day and within sort of 10, 15 minutes, I've seen something that I couldn't see before because you've got your head so close into what you're doing and you're so focused on potentially one or two little things you kind of miss the bigger picture and um, some of the things that are on the outside. So, yeah, yeah, definitely like taking a step back and having a break and then coming back to it with a bit more of a, a clear mindset is definitely a, a, a can be a help when you're stuck on puzzles. Definitely. Yeah, it's funny that you say that, especially with the, you know, programming. Uh, I used to you know, program back when I was in school. I learned quite a few different languages and I would get stuck on trying to make something work in particular. And looking at the code, it seemed like it should work, but it didn't. It, it, sometimes it would almost, but not exactly like I wanted. It's like, why? And then, uh, you know, I, it, it was 100% in my brain. And I would just go to bed and finally fall asleep. And I swear I'd, I'd dream about it. And I've woken, I, I remember waking up in the middle of the night, like two, three in the morning from a dream and jump on my computer, which back then it was Commodore 64 doing basic. And boom. Uh, what I actually dreamed stuck in my head. I, I made it work like within minutes. It was pretty, pretty cool. But yeah, I, of course, the harder you get, the tougher that gets. But I would also say as well, having just, just generally having self belief that you can actually do it. Because I think. It, yeah. can be quite, it, be, it can be quite easy to kind of look at a puzzle, get stuck on a puzzle, and then you're sort of thinking, oh, well, it, it's beyond me, I can't do this. And then you kind of enter a bit of a negative spiral whereby you're just constantly telling yourself you're not good enough to do a puzzle or you can't solve it. When, you know, just trying to keep that positivity. I know it's difficult when you're stuck in a rut, but definitely never think that you, you can't solve it because at the end of the day, as impossible as it may seem in the moment, it definitely is possible to solve it. And there's other people that have solved it. So, yeah, try and stay positive about it and believe in yourself that you can do it. Oh, absolutely. Uh, it just, and I'd say, you know, just because you didn't solve it as fast as somebody else, or you're taking a hundred times as long, 
doesn't mean anything. It's just, you know, it's like, you know, certain puzzles, like, like, back, you know, like with Portal, the you know, knock is blind for funny that took me way longer, and vice versa. It just depends on uh, your frame of mind when you're playing, and it just, you know, I don't know. For me, it's how, how awake am I, how alert, and how how focused am I really when I play it. And if I am, then it tends to go much easier. And sometimes I, I'm just, I just feel like I'm lost from the get-go. And it's, yeah. I, I, I just make myself, and it kind of applies, it, it applies to Talos too. It's like I, I would, uh, you know, basically familiarize myself with the the area and what you know, as long as I can see everything that I can see and what what I need to do then I can walk away from it and think about it or let it kind of stew in the back of my mind and come back and it's like okay yeah I was completely missing this obvious thing uh, you know, or like here, I'll try this because you know I go back to the to the Einstein of you know the definition of insanity is doing the same thing over and over <laughs> again and expecting different results. Uh, it's totally true, and we do that just because we're out of ideas. But then you go, okay, I've done this a thousand times. Yeah. Now, I need to do something different. What can I do different? And then that alone, when, when I tell myself that, it's like, what can I do different? I've, I've already done this, so that's not, and that's not right. It, it's not going to work, so what can I do different? Let's see. Let's, let's, let's just think about it logically. What can I do different? And go from there just try to do different things and sometimes it's still the wrong thing but it, it it'll lead me to go oh I, you know that ah moment and you know that that that's just you know the way it works for me but how about those those puzzles that require some coding of things for me they're pretty sneaky hints and that code and developers can see lots of hints pretty easy how about about layman i'm not sure i understand the various yeah. is layman the name of a puzzle or something different Donald. yeah i'm not sure what you're getting out of either You mean like for so i think what you're asking is um you feel like our response has been from like a, a programmer's kind of point of view and you kind of are asking about like a, a regular joe kind of person um i mean i think a lot of it still stands true even for somebody who is um a regular person not potentially very computer programmer kind of oriented um, you know just taking your time with things taking breaks and like i said just trying to look for something subtle I, I i don't i wouldn't feel like the there's a different set of advice for anybody who's kind of like computer programming orientated as opposed to somebody who's not so yeah I would say uh, it, it's, it, it rings the same. I, I think what you potentially are getting out there is that for somebody like 
me who is a programmer, I potentially see things quicker or, or easier. But again, it's, it doesn't come down to how quickly you're solving something or how long it takes you to complete a puzzle. It should just be a case of the fact that you did it. No matter how long it takes you, it's that satisfaction that you get at the end of it that you can say, I did take my time. Yes, it did take me a long time, but I did it and I'm proud of my achievement sort of thing. Yeah, exactly. Uh, it, yeah, I, I just kind of brought up the you know, programming thing just because to me it's kind of similar. Uh, it, it, it's just playing the game, you know, playing a puzzle game. To me, it's the same kind of it's a way of thinking so like each puzzle game has its own mechanics like Talos compared to portal compared to you know, yada yada it's it's a matter of understanding basically how they how they do puzzles and and tr and trying to think in the in that direction so, like, when you're playing Talos, you can't think the way you do in Portal. You have to, you know, vice versa, you have to think, you know, what you're being taught as you start playing it. And, and try to keep that uh, frame of mind, so... Don't have to be a developer or programmer. Puzzles that require coding, ASCII uh, things ASCII. to solve puzzles. Those were quite sneaky in the Talos one. But I'm, I'm trying to think back. I mean, I don't. It's a, it's a long time since I played um, Talos one, but. The, the only kind of time I remember seeing any like, ASCII or hex stuff was in the actual messages themselves on the terminal. Was there? So I mean, even even though I am computer programming oriented, I you know I, it's, it's not something that I can do off the top of my head. I would I still went and looked at some conversions and and looked at different bits and pieces. So clock puzzle. Honestly, honestly, Perfirus, I, I can't remember. As I say, it's been so long since I've played Talos. I did mean to go back and um, give it a playthrough at some point, because I don't actually have a full playthrough of Talos on my YouTube channel. Um, hmm. I mean, what I would say to that is, if there's a puzzle like that in the game, and... I would kind of feel that probably they haven't done a good enough job giving you the information you need to solve the puzzle. I, I wouldn't, and in, and in that case, I wouldn't really worry too much about the fact that you've had to look it up if the information isn't in the game. Like I say, I, although I deal with computers on a daily basis, I couldn't really tell you ask any ASCII characters off the top of my head. So, you know, don't feel bad that you feel like you've had to look something like that up. I can agree, I, I can remember a few. Uh, like all uh, 169, uh, 167, you're like copyright, registered. <laughs> yeah, those, those kind of things that you can all, at least on Wonders, you know, all and then type four digit caves. Full of ASCII stuff. This is it. Like, yeah, but even even still, though, like, as a computer programmer, that's not the sort of thing that you need to know no, or no, no, be no. familiar no. with. You know, you don't very. You know, very. I can't tell you if I've ever used ASCII. If I'm honest, when I've been um, doing any sort of computer programming, so. No, I, I haven't either. I only used it back in the late '80s. Or mid to late 80s, 
uh, uh, when uh, BBSs were the thing and we had 300 baud modems and then upgraded to 1200, 2400 baud and get a ooh, 2400 baud super fast. It's, it's, yeah. It was so fast that, you know, it was hard to keep up reading it as it downloaded. <laughs> I mean, but yeah, you, and the, all the graphics on the PBS interwebs back then were asking. So, and that's where, that's where all the, the, the whatever you want to call them, emotes, emojis, that sort of stuff, before they got to color graphics when it was just, you know, your white lines, people using, you know, like colon, yeah, dash parentheses for frown or smiley or that sort of stuff. That's where that's where it came from. But yeah, the, in order to do other stuff, you had to know ASCII and so, yeah, other than that, yeah, I never use ASCII either, so. Well, like, like I say, Papyrus, I mean, I wouldn't feel bad about having to look those sorts of things up in a puzzle. If, if the information isn't provided to you somewhere in game, then, yeah, definitely don't feel bad that you'd have to look that up. Yeah, like, I, I play games that... Uh, that it, it used like some of the puzzles in the games required knowledge of binary, yeah, and, which, which is pretty simple. But I mean, not every you know, most people don't know binary, you know, it's you know, one, two, four, eight, blah blah blah. Uh, and, and that's where like your size of RAM and everything else comes from is based on binary code. Yeah. You know, so, you know, some people kind of know that, but they don't know how binary works. Uh, how how to count in binary and that sort of stuff. I played ones like that that, yeah, people people just had to look it up because they were completely stuck because they didn't... Uh, some of the games I played that had it didn't give you any kind of hint. You just had to know it which is no big deal for me, but and that's because I learned about it growing up. Yeah. And, and in, other case, in other cases, the better games, I will say, actually had clues. Uh, they wouldn't give you everything, but they give you a sample and you kind of had to figure it out. Kind of like, uh, say, Fibonacci sequence. Yes, yeah. you know, and you go, okay, figure out the pattern kind of thing. And they, they would give you something where if, if you concentrated on it and just dealt with it logically, you could, you could figure it out and go, oh, okay, cool. And of course, nowadays you can just skip that and go, okay, what's, how does binary work? And, we end with like, you know, Copilot, uh, Chat GPT, etc. Because Copilot uses Chat GPT. Yep. Uh, they, they can. I mean, you can just ask, and it'll tell you how everything works without yeah. even, you know, it, it's. I mean, it's so simple. Nowadays, as opposed to back in the day when we didn't have Google and search engines, but yeah. Fun times though. It was definitely a different way of learning that I think kids kids and even adults miss out on nowadays. Cause and, and I think it's a it's a plus and a minus, you know, pro con at the same time. Like you can yeah. usually look look up stuff you know, like as a say, like you're you're in IT. Most people use Google. 
you don't you don't remember everything you don't no. know everything you google you google the right and that's why you, and that's why you, you have know like knowledge, google, base, knowledge bases and things because yeah. as long as you know the basics um you know you, you like you say you can't be expected to remember absolutely everything there is to know about um it especially because it's Constantly such a, changes. It's, it's, yeah, it's an ever-evolving yeah. industry yeah. so you can't be expected to know absolutely everything that goes on um in and around it that would just be insane but yeah i mean i did it and uh I, I, exactly that i was like man how do you like in the earlier days like how do you how do you get through that and then yeah. i got uh oh yeah don't you know don't worry about it just google it essentially just just search yeah and, and then i'm like okay that makes sense and then i would and of course as the internet has grown especially with the uh, you know like github and yeah uh, uh, other uh, uh repositories that you know you can find stuff already written to yep. do what you to do what you want to do for a section you know, a section of your program and it's like okay awesome because there's a lot of great programmers out there for specific certain areas as as opposed to you know and then nobody is great at everything but some people are really good at certain areas so yeah kind of like you know you uh me no i i'm no longer a programmer because i i stopped doing it back in the 90s like uh mid 90s so yeah between Basic, Fortran, COBOL, Pascal, uh, C, C, C plus. That, that's about as far as, I, and you know, I, everything just took a different direction for me after that. Yeah. Because I, I was originally going to be a programmer, which yeah. I kind of, I, I kind of wish I would have ended up doing, but. You know, life life happened, and I made my choices, and just you know, <laughs> yeah, think things happened, and I didn't I didn't do it. But I, re I remember going to like I had a girlfriend and that went to Virginia Tech, which is one of the biggest colleges in my state, as well as uh, in the in the country far as you know especially with like football and stuff like that yeah but but yeah i i came up i i've wrote i was writing programs for people to help them out <laughs> uh but, you know that were in there anywhere from first to third year and in, in, in pascal so yeah, yeah pa but yeah anyway that was that was fun times it's like oh you're in college you've been taking this for you know two three years I, this is simple i i'd freaking knock out what their assignment was to make it do and anywhere from depending on what year they were in 15 to, to minutes to an hour and a half and bada bing bada boom yeah hey let's go party now <laughs> you don't have to worry about it you got a you got a hundred on this one i would i would honestly say though previous i i still wouldn't take that stance on it if i'm honest i i just think regardless of whether you are like computer and tech savvy you should just um try and, and i say this to people who ask me about like being a computer programmer i just try and look at things and think things through in a logical manner so just try and break down the problem into little chunks and then work through it piece by piece as logically as you can you know yeah. people say to me oh you know it must be really hard being a computer programmer well actually no because 
if I'm working on something, I'm not sure exactly what I want to do. I'll write it down, think about it logically, what it needs to do, write it in like um, English or pseudocode or whatever I want to do, just write it in layman's terms, what I want it to do. And then it's just like almost like speaking a foreign language. It's just then how you just need to know how to then interpret that idea into something that works in a computer program. So I just think don't. I just think you kind of need to just give yourself a bit of credit that you are capable of doing it. You will be capable of doing it. And just breaking it down, taking your time like we've kind of said already, will um, certainly help you go a long way. Yeah, uh, bottom line. Don't, don't, don't doubt yourself, Imperius. Yeah, bottom line, take your time and just enjoy it and you will... Don't get frustrated. If you're stuck, everybody gets stuck. I mean, yeah. We got genius knock here who gets stuck. And he he gets through it by sticking with it. Coming back later, like we said. Just you know, just enjoy the the journey, not the don't don't just think about the, the destination of, of solving. Uh, is that it. um is that um underground video you un you unlock from the um, in the witness isn't it i don't know if you remember any of like the videos from the witness but there's the one it's the black and white film the guy and he's like walking across a um courtyard with a candle and he's trying to get from one side to the other with his candle without it going out and it's kind of like well you could just take it over to the other side and light it but like like you just said there, it's, that's not the point. The point is, it's about the journey. And it's the journey you take, rather than just, you know, trying to get to the destination and um, being at the end. Taking the journey and learning from the journey and enjoying the journey is um, certainly a massive part of um, any computer game when you're trying to work something out and you're struggling. So maybe I'm just rambling now. I don't know. No, you're, you're on point. I mean, that, that, that's what I'm saying. And sometimes I have to remind myself to uh, actually just just enjoy what I'm doing yeah. and stop stop trying to solve things so quick or whatever. Just enjoy the atmosphere. And it's kind of what I did with uh, Viewfinder. I actually yeah. just, I, I, for once, I just said, okay, I'm going to take my time with this and actually look around and try different things out. And, and it helped. And, and I mean, there are things in that game where if you, if you read the stuff, it's not necessary. But if you do, there's, the, you know, there's some journals and things that if you read it, it actually is clues to help you with, with the puzzles. So that's one thing I... I don't think. Uh, I think, with, uh, if I recall, you said that you don't have to, which you don't. No. But 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 yeah, there are things like we're uh, one in particular that just comes to mind is the, the very first one. You had some reading to do. Uh, if you wanted to, you know, it was sitting around on the couch and whatever. And you flip through it, and it, and it had a diagram of a cage that was closed on the top and bottom, but then it was open all the way around except for bars. And there was uh, inside of the cage, you know, what you needed, but how do you get it? Because do you recall that particular puzzle? Uh, it, it was. Was it in chat? Was it one of the chapter four puzzles where um, started I, to get the blue mechanics? Yeah, the purple. Yeah, the purple mechanics. Yeah. Yeah. So, like this one was, it had the cage uh, off off the edge of the map, so to speak, and. 
if you're looking at it to your left was a, like a couch and stuff like they have and tables they had some books and journals or whatever and it showed diagrams of okay you can't get it out the top like previously uh, one of the puzzles you could get it out of the top the battery yeah. but this one it was completely closed in you couldn't get it and it was purple so you couldn't take a picture and copy it so you had to figure a way to get it out which the journal can it towards the solution but certainly didn't give it away at all so yeah, so yeah that that i thought that was quite a good one but the only the only thing that you could do uh, it was it was actually the battery was sitting on a piece of non-purple flooring so you could get rid of it make it fall to the floor of the cage but yep. then yeah you know I, I think you know what i'm talking about now uh, uh, not already anyway but yeah that was I thought that was a pretty cool one because that because i was kind of like okay how am i gonna do this <laughs> this is like you know you can't take a picture of it that doesn't work and then oh just like not doing you know went back to the other area behind it was like ah you well i don't want to uh just hold that uh, for a minute, buddy. I'm going to uh, just need to go get a drink, so I'll uh, be back in uh, two minutes. Okay. Uh, I was about ready to say the same thing, but yeah. Uh, I, I, I won't say anything about how that was solved in case anybody's yeah. playing. But, no spoilers. Yeah. No, no spoilers, right. but yeah, right you back. end up you end up using another... The, the, the I'm, first going. <laughs> <laughs> I'm going. I'm going. Okay, bye-bye.